Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the seventh lecture of the gender toxicology, and I will be discussing diagnosis of poisoning in living and dead. The diagnosis of poisoning is very important, and uh, when we come across the patients for medical practitioner, sometimes it can be mistaken by the symptoms which are produced by a poison. because they does not appear in the natural disease because when we expect certain symptoms about a disease and the patient present with a symptom which do not conform according to the symptoms of the disease then that arises a suspicion and then that becomes a problem and it is very important we should know every medical practitioner should know that these symptoms produced by the poisoning should not be mistaken as a disease and this may sometimes lead to wrong treatment and there are two types of poisoning sometimes it is acute poisoning and sometimes it is chronic in acute poisoning basically the diagnosis depends upon the history the examination of the patient the lab investigation and when we talk about the history it is important about the mode of onset because in acute poisoning the onset is sudden and it may be after the ingestion of some food some substance or some drink because the person is perfectly all right person is healthy but suddenly there is onset of symptom upon ingestion of something and the important thing about the previous state of health is that person was previously perfectly normal and there was no history of about any disease whether acute illness or any chronic illness so first person was in perfect state of health and sudden arise of any symptom with after ingestion of food or something arise the suspicion of being poisoned then the associated con contacts that they may show a similar symptoms if the source is common for example if the more than one person they had some ingested something and they have common symptom that also arises a suspicion of being poisoning the signs and symptoms they may show uh, rapid increase in the severity of poisons or sometime it is waning or waxing of symptom that is the appearance of symptom rapidly increases and disappearance also is another uh, suspicion that something has been swallowed which produce symptom and though it is vanished so these symptoms which are usually involved in the acute poisoning in gastrointestinal tract some poisons they cause severe vomiting while some cause diarrhea and along with there can be abdominal pain colicky pain retching and nausea so these are the gastrointestinal symptom which can appear after the ingestion of some poison then in cns some poison which act on central nervous system and it may cause stimulation or it may cause depression and coma while some poison they can also produce convulsions and disorientation and later the person may uh, enter into coma then in the respiratory symptom the poison which acts on the respiratory system are mostly inhaled because they are volatile they are in gaseous forms like carbon monoxide poisoning or fumes of some concentrated hydrochloric acid they are inhaled and they will produce respiratory symptom so there is no single symptom 
and no definite group of symptoms which are absolutely characteristics of poisoning except few that we cannot conform a typical book picture of symptoms which appear in the patient the closest resemblance to disease may be produced by some poisons that means the symptoms of poisoning sometimes may be so closely associated to a certain symptoms of disease and similarly resemblance to poisoning by some disease may occur that means the symptom of some disease may appear like a symptom of poisoning and symptom of poisoning may appear like the symptom of some disease so this can occur but the most important point which should be remembered that the average course of disease and expected onset of actions by the administered drugs are known for example when we examine a patient of acute tonsillitis we accept we expect that the person may present with uh, uh, sneezing coughing sputum fever pain in the throat and on examination the throat will be congested and when we administer drug it will respond so this is the normal expectation and it is only from the discrepancies between the expected and the observed action which arises suspicion that we expect the symptom of disease should be such and the person should respond to the treatment in this way but the result is unexpected the symptom does not conform into a uh, disease uh, symptom and similarly the person patient does not respond to treatment so frequently it is observed that no traces of poisons are found that means the poisoning has occurred but upon detection you do not find any trace of the poisoning although from the circumstantial evidence is certain that the patient that the poison is the cause of the illness that we are sure that the symptoms are by the poisoning or the patient or the person has died because of poisoning but we do not find any trace of poison upon investigation upon testing and this happens why there are three possibilities of this negative finding that we do not find any poison upon uh, the test the cause may be one of the disease only that that means this is not poisoning and the person the symptoms are because of some disease or the poison may have been eliminated by vomiting or by other means or it has been neutralized or by be metabolized within the body or the analysis may be performed faulty that is selection of material which is sent to the lab is wrong the site from where it is to be collected that is wrong quantity may be insufficient the preservation is not proper and the uh, substance is destroyed and these all situations can lead to negative analysis now regarding examination of a poison patient in poisoning cases usually there is multi system involvement but the system that is most commonly and predominantly affected it gives the clue of specific poison and it helps in the diagnosis that is the symptoms involve a group of uh, systems not specific to one system but the system a symptom of some system which uh, is leading that can tell about the uh, source of the poison for example the poisons are drugs they produce uh, effects on the vital signs only like the blood pressure the pulse and this points that the poison may be a cardiac poison 
similarly uh, the poison the drug which produce on the effects on the central nervous system like altered sensorium dizziness convulsions coma it points that the poisons are the cerebral poisons now about the lab investigation in acute poisoning the poison can be detected in the following acute cases in the vomitus the ingested food the stomach washing the blood urine and the feces so these uh, are the sources from where you can detect poison and in chronic poisoning the uh, suggested uh, sources may be that the symptoms can be developing slowly when you suspect a chronic poisoning that the symptoms usually develop gradually and there is remission or even complete disappearance of symptom when you remove the patient from the surrounding for example the occupational poison that if you remove the person from the source from where he is being poisoned the symptoms uh, uh, even completely disappear or repeated attacks of undiagnosed gastrointestinal irritation it arises the suspicion of homicidal poisoning that some thing is being introduced in the food in the drink which is being ingested or the poison can be detected in the food medicine vomitus and the urine so these are the various clues which lead that the chronic poisoning has been occurred now regarding diagnosis of poisoning in the dead it involves basically you can get from the history post mortem appearance the chemical analysis and the by experimenting on the animals or the circumstantial evidence in history uh, this is important that you get the uh, relatives and the eye witness and the police they will give some clue about the poisoning you must ask for the symptoms the time of appearance of symptom the time of person remained alive and uh, how much time he has been elapsed after the ingestion and what treatment was given so you should gather all this information and on post mortem appearance and external examination sometime it can lead to the diagnosis the external surface of the body and the clothes should be looked keenly for the stains of the poison of the vomitus or the fetus feces in the dark brown or black stains with burning and corrosive corrosion appearance point toward the sulfuric acid or the corrosive poison then the yellow stain may uh, point out the nitric acid poisoning and the deep cyanosis mostly seen in opium poisoning regarding the post mortem lividity the color of the lividity can sometimes give the clue about the poison and the cause of death for example in carbon monoxide poisoning it's a cherry red color and in cyanide poisoning it is dark pink in color and in opiates it is dark color the sometime the odor which is being emitted from the body that can Uh, give a clue like in cyanide you uh, get a bitter almond smell in carbolic acid the disinfectant smell in alcohol the acetone smell and in the hydrogen sulfide the rotten egg smell so these can lead to uh, know the type of poison then the natural orifice should be keenly observed the discharge from the natural orifice or any damage that can be characteristic of some poisons then the blood tinge discharge from the mouth from the nose it can occur in case of organophosphorus poisoning and asphyxiates then the staining erosion and ulceration in near female uh, genitalia in case of abortifacient drugs then there can be injection marks in the presence of 
body uh, on the body the injection mark can be no should be noted and it can uh, tell us the injection by of the heroin or opium then the evidence marks of violence can uh, be seen in homicide deaths so internal examination will tell us that uh, any erosion or straining in the mouth and throat upper respiratory tract examination for the inhaled poisons or the soot particles the corrosion and deformation or the ulceration of the inner aspect of lips and the tongue the mucous membrane of the stomach and gastrointestinal for specific changes specific color ulcer softening and perforation and this is important in corrosion process then the contents of the gastrointestinal tract look for any solid particle tablets for body powder liquid and there may be some having distinct odor then you can also examine heart for any finding so regarding the chemical analysis and histopathological examination in every case of suspected poisoning an attempt should be made to demonstrate the presence of poison in the fluid or in the organ that means the drug or poison should be detected which is not the normal constituent of the body and it is in the toxic level then you can label the the person being poisoned and for this purpose the routine specimen should be sent to the uh, chemical examiner or the forensic science agency and the viscera which are sent stomach with its contents small intestine liver and uh, with gall bladder kidney one kidney or half of each kidney spleen whole blood 10 to 20 ml and urine whatever is available and the the preservatives which are to be used they are highlighted here the routine viscera sent to chemical examiner are sent in super saturated saline and some organs or tissues should be sent for histopathological and they are sent in uh, formal saline then we should try to find out the circumstantial evidence the clues regarding the recent purchase of poison by the victim or accused his behavior the conduct of the relative the suicidal note the history of quarrel any fight or some show, uh, financial problem that may lead to provide a valuable information so thank you very much this was all about the today